Hello, I'm Kath. My channel is Made by Kathcraft. Thank you very much for joining me for my latest video. So in this video, I am planning on popping on every day this week and sharing with you what I'm wearing for my handmade wardrobe. And I'm planning on doing this video this particular week because it is the first week in May and I'm being inspired by Me Made May, which is happening at the moment over on Instagram. You may well be joining in too. Just in case you don't know, or haven't heard about Me Made May. It's been running for quite a few years now and it's an initiative that was set up originally by a lady called Zoe whose Instagram account is so so blog and it's basically um, encourages you to set up your own personal challenge to do with your handmade wardrobe for the month of May. It could be anything you want it to be and the challenge that I am setting myself this month um, which is one I've done in previous years and really enjoyed is to wear a different garment of handmade clothing every day in the month of May so no repeats and um, yeah just try and mix it up a little bit um, and I really enjoy this challenge because it really gets me reaching for things in my wardrobe that I haven't worn for a while or maybe trying different combinations that I haven't thought of before so it's a lot of fun and I'm really looking forward to popping on every day and sharing with you what I've chosen to wear. So I'm starting off today which is Monday the 1st of May and it's a bank holiday here today. Um, so my husband is off work and my children are off school. And it's early afternoon now. And this morning we've been up to the, our local town and there's a May Fair going on there, which happens every year on sort of May Day, the first, um, the first Monday in May. And it's a lot of fun. And there were tombolas, quite a lot of tombolas raising money for different causes. There was face painting. Um, my son um, really enjoyed going in like a little mini Zorb ball um, and sort of rolling around with a load of other children that looked like a lot of fun too. So they had quite a variety of things going on there and we met up with some friends and had a little wander around together. So it was really nice. Uh, the weather has been a bit mixed though. Um, I always find May can be such a diff such a variety of weather you get in May. You never know if it's going to be beautiful sunshine or still quite chilly. And today has very much been showers and sun. Um, so one minute it was beautiful sunshine, the next minute it was chucking it down. We didn't get too wet thankfully, but yeah, it's been a bit of a mixed morning. And it's nice to be back home now because it's definitely darkening up outside again. Anyway, um, I'll move on to talking about what I'm actually wearing today. And because I knew it was going to be a little bit rainy this morning, potentially, instead of wearing a pair of jeans, which I often wear at the weekend when I'm doing stuff with the kids, um, I decided to wear a skirt and tights because I thought if my tights get wet, they'll dry a lot better than having to sort of spend the morning walking around in a pair of soggy jeans. So I'm wearing a handmade skirt and a handmade top. So I'll start off with the skirt. I'll just stand up a little bit so you can see it first. It's like a denim mini skirt. So you might have seen this skirt before. It's one of my favourites, but I haven't had it out for ages. So again, me made me encourage me to sort of reach for it. I made this skirt using this pattern here, which is yeah a bit tatty because it's a well-loved pattern. I need to repair it a bit there. Let's rip it back too. Um, this is the Brumby skirt pattern by Megan Nielsen. It's a really lovely sort of mini skirt length skirt pattern. It's a gathered skirt with quite a fitted waistband that's sort of contoured a little bit. So it kind of really hugs your waist nicely and it's designed to fit sort of on your natural waist and then sort of flare out with the gathering. And it's got three different variations included, but the version I'm um, wearing today, this top version here, which is designed for more substantial fabrics like the kind of denim I'm wearing today, which is like a rigid denim. But it's got these really big pockets, you can see as the model in the picture, and um, some sort of cool sort of um, details you can top stitch along. And um, it's got an exposed zip at the back, which is quite fun to put in actually. It's a little bit fiddly, but I remember doing my first exposed zip and it felt like a real kind of success when it had gone in okay. And it's quite a nice feature on this skirt. I'll um, stand up a little bit and try and show you the exposed zip hopefully. I hope you can see that at the back okay. And it's got a really good size range, this pattern. Um, I've got the paper pattern, which comes in a zero to 20 US sizing, but there's also a curved version, which I think goes from a 14 to 30. So yeah, it's a nice size inclusive pattern. And yeah, I've made my version in this sort of, yeah, rigid denim fabric. It's very similar actually to the version the model is wearing on the front. I had fun with the top stitching as well. I've gone for sort of, yeah, kind of gold top stitching to sort of show off all the details on this skirt. And it's really nice and comfy to wear and I just find it goes with so many things in my wardrobe. And I think I made the size four um, because that's pretty much bang on my measurements, waist 26 and hips 36. I think the waist measurement is definitely 
the critical one here. The finished garment measurement says no no ease at the waist. Like the finished garment measurement for the size four is also 26. So it's really designed to sit quite snugly there. And it goes out so there's loads of room in the hips. But that's what I'm wearing as a skirt. So this denim came from an online fabric shop that closed down quite a long time ago, unfortunately. But it's quite a nice stiff denim, which I think creates quite a nice shape on this skirt. And then on top, I've got a jersey top that I made using this pattern here which is the Tilly and the Buttons Agnes top pattern, which has recently been re-released in a larger size range. So this is the re-released pattern envelope here. It now goes from a UK 6 up to a UK 34, which takes you up to a bust of 60 inches. So it's got a really good size range on it. And it's such a nice, classic, basic jersey top pattern. I'm sure it's one you've seen before. It's um, a sewing pattern designed for confident beginners. So it's quite, I guess it's quite nice as an early jersey make if you're fairly new to sewing. And it's just such a easy to wear top I think. I'll show you the line drawings. It's quite a fitted top with a scoop neck um, and you can make it in long sleeves or shorter sleeves. And there are a couple of little variations like you can add some ruching at the front or you can make this sort of more poofy sleeve with a ruching on too. But I just really like this basic version here. Um, I've made it a few times and um, that's the version I'm wearing today. And I made it in I think a straight size two which is based on my measurements. I'm one inch larger on the hip than a size two, um, but I find because it's in stretchy fabric, it isn't too tight there, and so I've never bothered grading out. And the fabric I'm I'm wearing today, this fabric I've made my Agnes top in today, is a really cute cotton jersey. Again, I got quite a long time ago from another online fabric shop that has since closed down, but I just really love this fabric. I thought it was a really pretty colour of sort of blue. It's got these little cute little flowers on. And I've actually made a couple of garments in this fabric. In, in fact, what sort of made me think of wearing this garment today was my daughter was wearing a dress I made for her in this fabric yesterday. This is the little dress she was wearing yesterday, which is the pansy dress by Poppy and Jazz. And I originally made matching dresses for me and her in this fabric. I made her this one. I made me, I can't remember the pattern I used. Um, it's a, I think it's a McCall's pattern. I'll try and remember and pop the details up. Um, but it's like a scoop neck jersey dress. It's a jersey t-shirt sort of jersey dress I really like. Um, but unfortunately, when my daughter wore it yesterday, it's really getting too short for her now. So I think I'll have to pop it away and maybe hand it down to my niece or something. Um, because, yeah, it's getting a bit small, which is a shame because I love twinning with her and our matching dresses. Um, and then I had just enough of the fabric left over to squeeze out this top, which I was quite pleased about. Because I think, actually, I really love this top and I yeah, do end up wearing it quite a lot and it's just really comfy. So that is what I'm wearing today. I'll pop a picture up so you can see what it looks like on it worked really well for heading out this morning because I did get a bit wet but my tights did dry quite quickly and um, it was quite nice and comfy and relaxed too so that is Monday the 1st of May so I'll leave you now and I'll pop on again for Tuesday tomorrow to show what I'm wearing then and through the week I'll probably share a little bit about what I'm up to on the sewing front too and what I'm up to generally as well so hopefully it'll be a fun chatty video with lots of sewing content so I will see you again tomorrow bye Hello, it's Tuesday now, so day two of May. It's about 10 o'clock in the morning here when I'm filming this. I've been out on the school run this morning. The children are back to school today after the long weekend. I've got back, done a few jobs around the house that I needed to get sorted. And so I thought I'd pop on now um, and share with you what I'm wearing before I go and make myself a cup of tea um, before I get on with some more jobs. It's one of those days, lots of bits to do around the house. But yeah, today I have got on a dress that I made by hacking a top pattern and I really love this hack. I've made this hack, um, hacked sort of dress version of this pattern um, in two different fabrics and I really enjoy wearing them both. But the pattern I hacked is this one here, the Ogden Cami by True Bias. It's such a nice pattern. It's got a really good size range too. Um, I've got the 0 to 20 US sizing version. There's also a 14 to 30. But it's a lovely um, woven cami top with this deep V at the back and the front and these spaghetti straps and quite a straight fit to it. The version I have doesn't have any darts, so it's quite a straight fit, but I think the um, 14 to 30 version does have um, darts to give a bit more shape and room around the bust. Um, but yeah, it's not designed to be fitted at all. There are no zips and fastenings. You just pull it on over your head and because it's such a simple shape and um, it's a lot of fun to hack I find so yeah I've made a few different hacks you might have seen um over the years of this pattern to turn it into dresses mostly dresses with different types of gathered skirts and the version I'm wearing today is kind of a pinafore style dress I think I sized up one size to give it a bit more of a roomy fit so I can layer things up 
underneath because it's one I sort of always plan to wear as a layering piece rather than on its own. And I sort of cropped the um, cami top into sort of an empire line, maybe or like a fairly high waist. I'll stand up it so you can see where it comes down to the top bit right here. And then added on a gathered skirt that finishes a little bit above my knee. And I've added in pockets too. And I um, widened the straps a little bit more to give it more of a chunky pinafore feel to it. Um, and um, the bodice is fully lined. So I basically, when I made this cut to um, front pieces and two back pieces and then sewed the bodice together and attached the skirt to the outer front piece and then sort of slip stitched the um, inside piece um, um, underneath to kind of um, enclose the seam around the middle so it's quite a nice neat finish on the inside and I really love wearing this one um, I really like layering up um, at the moment I've got it on with just like a ready to wear black cardi and a ready to wear top underneath that's quite a similar shape to the um Agnes T by Tilling the Buttons. I think um, whenever this um, t-shirt wears out, I'll probably replace it with a one I make myself using the Agnes T pattern. But yeah, um, the fabric I made my pinafore dress in is this really lovely cotton fabric. It's a Rifle Paper Co cotton. So it's kind of like a quilting cotton weight. It's a bit more substantial definitely than a cotton lawn and a cotton poplin even, I think. And it's got quite a soft feel to it now I've washed it a few times. It's not like a brushed cotton, but it's starting to feel a little bit brushed now I've washed it, which I quite like. And it's got a black base and all these lovely um, sort of um, woodland flowers um, in the print. I'll stand up a bit so you can see the print. I think it's really pretty, all the flowers. And so it's quite a nice, um, because it's more substantial, it does feel like quite a nice pinafore weight. It's not like a floaty dress by any means. Um, and yeah, I always enjoy getting this one out. And I actually wrote a blog post about this hack. I think um, I think I wrote a blog post. I've written a blog post about a few of my different Ogden um, cami hacks. I think I wrote one on this pinafore hack. And I'll link that down below in case you fancy having a read or maybe making one yourself. It's just quite nice and loose and comfy to wear. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm wearing today. And I also realised yesterday, I forgot to mention what my son was wearing because he's always quite keen to get involved in my um my youtube and that sort of thing he's always asking me questions about it and um come up with ideas and which is really nice he's interested and yesterday he was keen for me to take a photo of him because he was wearing um handmade joggers and a handmade t-shirt so he thought i should talk about what he was wearing from he made may too today he's back in school uniform but so i'll pop a picture in of him um in his outfit um i haven't realized i haven't put a picture of this but i'll put a picture in of this in a moment this is what my son was wearing yesterday he was wearing a pair of mini hudson pants by true bias which is a pattern i've made so many times for him he really likes the fit of it i think it's quite nice that that kind of fairly slim leg it's quite a nice look I and mean, he loves having like a brightly coloured cord added around the middle. So I think you can see in this picture, he's got like a neon green cord and the black French cherry joggers. And they're a new pair I made for him because he just goes through them really fast. Um, he's got a lot of pairs of shorts now where I've propped them off. Um, and then on top, he is wearing a really old t-shirt now that just still fits him. It is the free pattern, the ABB Kids Tee by DIBY Cub. I think there's an adults version as well that's also free, which I haven't tried. But I find the kids version fits my children really well. There's like a slim fit and a regular fit. And I always make the regular fit. Um, and it's just quite a simple t-shirt pattern. It comes together really nicely. There's an optional patch pocket, which I often add to, which often helps them tell the front of the t-shirt from the back of the t-shirt um, instead of using a label. Um, and the version he's wearing in this picture is in this really cool Where's Wally print fabric that I bought in a few different colourways for him because it's really hard to find nice prints for slightly older boys I think there are lots of cool prints when they're a bit younger and they love you know like tractors and um diggers and that and that sort of thing and farm animals I remember him going through that phase when he was little and he loved those things on for, on, on M clothes if I'd have sewed when he was that little but I didn't really sew for him at that point but now it's really hard to find fabrics that, that he likes that appeal to him but the Where's Wally definitely did so yeah, that's his top it's got a really cool where's wally print on it's a bit faded now this one actually because he's worn it so much but that is what he was wearing yesterday anyway so he's kind of participating in me made me too but yeah i'll also put up a photo of what i'm wearing today i'll put that one up now so you can see that one too um yeah i don't often get this one out just because it's one of those silly things where i really love it so i don't like to wear it too much so it doesn't wear out um but i, I do think it's important to get those clothes out that you sort of keep for 
sort of best in a way and celebrate them so I thought I'd wear it today it's not like it's even that formal or anything but I just really love this fabric and I don't rifle paper co prints are so beautiful I think um yeah anyway that is what I'm wearing today I'm gonna head off now do a few more chores but I think I'm gonna get a cup of tea first just have a moment um sit because we did have a busy weekend so yeah nice take a moment so I'll finish off here and I'll see you again tomorrow for Wednesday so yeah see you again tomorrow bye hello it's Wednesday morning here now and it's a lovely sunny day here today which is really nice I think it's supposed to be sunny all day and it's making me feel really happy um, because it feels like it's been cold and then overcast and rainy and generally quite wintry for so long that any sign of sunshine gets me starting thinking about spring and summer um, being able to wear some more summery clothes and just generally yeah having some slightly less gloomy weather so yeah I'm um, yeah, really enjoying the sunshine today so I've been out on the school run this morning as usual and then in a little bit I'm going to head into town I've got a few errands to run but I thought I'd pop on here first and share with you what I'm wearing today and as you can see it's even warm enough today for me to be able to wear a dress without a cardigan over the top which is nice I have still got tights on it's not quite bare legs and um, weather yet um, but yeah it is nice to be able to wear a dress without having to layer up over the top and the dress I'm wearing today is another hack actually it's a hack of this pattern here which is the Bowery Top pattern by French Navy and if you've watched my channel for a while you know I really like French Navy patterns I really like the style of them and I find they're really nice and sort of casual and sort of everyday style patterns that feel really nice to wear and the Bowery Top's a really cute woven top pattern it's for quite a cropped boxy top with a grown on sleeve with a um a um what do you call it <laughs> the words have gone out of my head with a cuff a sleeve cuff and it's got a button down back and this sort of curved hem that dips down at the front and at the back and it's got yeah quite a boxy um relaxed fit to it it hasn't got the biggest size range ever um french navy patterns have a fairly limited size range at the moment so at the moment the barry top goes from a bust of um 32 inches up to bust of 41 and three quarter inches but i do believe french navy are in the process at the moment of extending their size range and i think they're planning to extend the size range on um, the older patterns as well as new patterns going forward and i'm not sure what the exact time frame is um for that but they did suggest it wouldn't be happening um, too um, far in the future so fingers crossed um, that soon the French Navy patterns will be available in a wider size range because they are really nice patterns. But yeah this is a really cute top pattern and I actually bought the fabric that I'm wearing today to make just the Barry top as it was the plain top version um, and this fabric came from Simply Fabrics. Um, I bought a few fabrics and they often have some really lovely and slightly different cotton fabrics in stock. I'll link the website down below this fabric isn't in stock anymore um but they often have some really lovely fabrics there this is like a washed cotton fabric so it's really nice and soft and i just love the colors in it i love the sort of um rose pink with the blue and there's sort of different shades of the pink there and i thought the check was quite a nice sort of size and quite a cute um slightly different print so i originally bought this fabric i bought 1.5 meters of it with a view to making just the top and I bought a little bit more fabric than the pattern required because I thought there might be some pattern matching needed on the check. So I wanted enough to sort of play with and make sure it all matched up nicely. But when the fabric arrived, I loved it even more than I expected to. And I thought actually, um, my gut said it needs to be turned into a dress. So I thought I'd try hacking the Barry top into a dress. And that is what I've done. I was a little bit worried I wouldn't have enough fabric for the dress because again, I still needed a pattern match. So I just had a kind of, play around with the pattern piece on the fabric before I started cutting anything out and I found I was able to just squeeze the two skirt pieces next to each other so they automatically kind of matched in terms of the stripes and then I was able to play around with the fabric I had left just about to squeeze the top out and actually it worked quite well using this pattern because it's got the grown on sleeve there weren't separate sleeve pieces so that made it a bit easier because there are fewer pattern pieces to have to sort of place. I really love how the hacks turned out. I basically cropped off the top um, around my natural waist, just around here, and I just on a gathered skirt, and I had just enough fabric to squeeze out pockets too, which is quite nice. I find pockets work so well on like a on like a sort of fabric like a cotton. Sometimes with the viscose, I find it can kind of pull a dress down and kind of drag and not actually be that practical. But I find, yeah, on a cotton dress, it's always nice to have pockets, I think. 
So yeah, the hack worked well. I've kept the button down back. I'll turn around and try and show you the buttons in a moment. I think, I think I've got five buttons on the back from memory. And when I had to look in my sort of button pot of all my sort of buttons I've got um, to be able to use on projects, I found I had some buttons that were a lovely blue colour that matched really well with the blue um, colour on this dress. And I thought they'd be perfect. But I only had four of them and I needed five buttons. And then I found um, in my button pot, I had a hot pink button that was the same size and style as the blue ones that I thought I could use as an extra feature button at the top of the button placket. And I really love how that's turned out. I really like that little um, sort of individual feature. So it worked out quite well. I didn't have quite enough blue buttons. Um, you don't often see it really because my hair's often in the way, but I know it's there and I like it. So I'll try and turn around a bit so you can see the button placket and my pink and blue buttons. Hopefully you could see them there. But it's a really nice comfy dress to wear because the top's designed to be fairly sort of relaxed fitting. It is quite a kind of baby doll sort of smock style dress. It's definitely not fitted. I haven't added waist ties and it's just really nice and comfy to wear. I'll pop a picture up so you can see what it looks like on. I think when I go out into town I probably will need to layer it up with a cardigan or a jacket or something but for now in the house I'm feeling quite nice and cosy because it's kind of a washed cotton it has a bit of a cosy feel to it still so it works quite well for this transitional weather I guess but yeah, that's why I'm wearing today. Well, I didn't add the patch pocket. I just kept it really simple. Um, and yeah, I managed to get all the stripes and checks to match, as you can see on the side there. So that was good. I was lucky I managed to squeeze it out of the 1.5 metres because I do love it as a dress. And I think I'll wear it more as a dress than I would do if I'd have gone for the top version of the Barry top. But anyway, that's why I'm wearing today. I'll finish up now because I'm going to head into town. So I'll say bye for today and I'll see you again tomorrow for Thursday. Bye. Hello, it's Thursday morning here now. And it's another sunny day outside today, which is really nice. I wasn't expecting it today, actually, from the forecast. And I've just got back from the school run. I went on a slightly extended school run this morning. After I dropped the children off at school, I walked down to our local post office because I had a parcel to drop off. And then I decided to take a slightly longer route back home, um, just because it was such lovely weather. And the route takes um, me sort of through a sort of tree line path. So yeah, it was a really nice way to start the day, having a little walk. But I'm back home now. I've got a few jobs to do, but I thought I'd pop on first and share with you what I'm wearing today. And today I'm wearing a dress that my daughter picked out for me. I've been trying to be a bit more organised um, this week about what I'm wearing and I've been getting out sort of options the night before and having a think about it and deciding then. Because usually I leave it to the morning and it's always a bit of a mad dash getting everyone ready and out the door for school. So it can be quite hard to think of what to wear. But yeah, I thought I'd be more organised, so my daughter helped me pick out this dress last night, and I'm really enjoying wearing it, actually. And it's another pattern by French Navy. It is this pattern here. It is their Fleetwood dress pattern, which is a really pretty shirt dress pattern, I think. And I think the size range is just very slightly bigger than the size range on the Bowery top I mentioned yesterday, so I'll just mention the size range. It goes from a bust of 32 inches up to a bust of 42 and a half inches. But I'll show you the line drawings in the pattern. Yeah, I think it has really nice details, this one that's a bit different. So I'm wearing view A here. So it's got a sort of round neck without any sort of collar and a button down front. And then this interesting panelling on the bodice. So you've got on this sort of front and back yoke. And then this panelling, which is kind of, it looks like it could be princess seams, but it's more to the side. The panelling sort of runs down here. And it's got a similar panelling on the back and a bit of gathering there. And then it's got this three quarter length sleeve and the sleeve has a sort of cuff and a little placket with a button. So it's a nice detail. And then it's got a gathered skirt in two tiers. And then view B is slightly different. It's got a slightly longer bodice, that's sort of a dropped waist and then just the one tier gathered skirt. But yeah, when I originally saw this pattern, I really loved this version. I do like a skirt with a ruffle and I thought the details in the bodice were quite pretty too. And I haven't done lots of... Um, sort of sleeve vent placket detail. So it was nice to try that out. And I do find French Navy um, instructions quite nice and clear. So there, it's a pattern I thought it would be a good one to yeah, try a um, one of these sleeve plackets on. It came together nicely, I think. Yeah, you can see a little placket there, a little pink button. So the version I'm wearing today, I think I made a straight size A based on my bust measurement because the waist measurement is a bit larger. It's not designed to be fitted around the waist. It's got quite a straight fit to it. And I made my version this lovely chambray fabric. 
and it's one I'd had in my stash for absolutely ages. I bought it because I loved it and then it's one of those fabrics I didn't want to cut into um, because I wanted to make sure I made just the right choice for it. And when the Fleetwood Dress pattern came along, I thought it'd be a great match. But it's a really cute chambre. Um, I think it was called Paris in Love or something like that because it's got lots of sort of French um, and Paris themed um, pictures on, like the Eiffel Tower and lots of little hearts and little Breton striped jumper. I just thought it was such a cute print and I really like the kind of chambre blue and um, classic blue with the pink and pops of pink on the fabric. So yeah, I was really pleased when the Fleetwood dress came along and I could finally cut into this fabric and sew it up. And I had fun with the other pops of pink with the buttons down the front as well. Um, and it was a nice sew. I did make a few adjustments. I've actually got my adjustments written on the front of my pattern envelope here, which I sometimes do. Um, I'm a bit haphazard about how I record my adjustments, but um, I do try and write them down um, so I remember them for the future. Um, so yeah, these ones on the front. I made a slight forward shoulder adjustment of one centimetre. I also found, I made, I think I made a toile of the bodice um, to check the fit before, before I sort of risked cutting into this nice fabric. And I remember that the, these um, cuffs came up really tight, so I ended up widening them slightly, and now they're quite nice. If I pull them up like this, it look a bit tight, but actually for general use, you can see there's a bit of room there. Um, oh, and I also did a sort of adjustment I often make, which is just to deepen the armhole slightly, to give a little bit more room there, because it is quite a a fairly snug armhole um, so now it doesn't feel like it's sort of too pulling under there. But yeah I really really love this one, um, it's quite a nice day dress, I just wore it this morning with a pair of trainers um, just because I thought that would be quite practical for a slightly longer walk. But I'll put a picture up of me wearing it so you can see what it looks like on. I'd like to revisit this pattern and make another version actually but I haven't come across just the fabric I want to use for another version yet so in the meantime I just really enjoy wearing this one, um, yeah I do love this fabric. So that is why I'm wearing today. I have got a little sewing plan today, um, which I thought I'd share as well. I'm planning to finally finish a make that I started, I think maybe a couple of months ago now, which is my um, saguaro trousers. So um, I decided to try the pattern by the Friday Pattern Company, the saguaro trousers for the first time this year. I thought they'd be a nice trouser to be able to take on holiday with me and that sort of thing. I'd made the top before, the sort of top with the, um, with the sort of, um, elastic under the bust and a sort of billowy grown on sleeves um, but I hadn't tried the trousers and this is my version and they're, sort of, they've been nearly finished for ages so you can see they've got a nice elasticated waist and they've got pockets and this little tie at the front and I made them or I've ma made them in this lovely viscose linen fabric from Guthrie Garney I think it's 75% viscose and 25% um, linen so it's a really lovely fabric I think perfect for a set of trousers it's a bit weightier than like a viscose chalet and it's lovely and soft and but still got a nice amount of movement to it but anyway i made them a couple of months ago and i still haven't hemmed them um and i don't usually leave projects that long uncompleted i am kind of like a starter finisher i guess and um, where i do like to kind of get things done before i move on to the next project usually but i just couldn't make a decision on how long these trousers should be so i've been umming and ahhing for a while but now the weather's been sunny for a couple of days, it's got me inspired to get them back out. Try them on and I think what I'll do is I'll turn them up a few different lengths. I lengthen them to give it a bit of wiggle room, um, so I had a few options to decide on the length. I'm going to turn them up a few different lengths and maybe take some pictures and figure out what length I want them to be and actually get around to hemming them. So that is my plan today, hopefully to finish those off. So it should be quite a small job on the sewing machine to hem just two trouser legs, but it might take a bit longer actually figuring out what length I want them. But yeah, it'd be nice to do a little bit of sewing today because I haven't done a lot this week. So that is what I'm planning to do on the sewing front. So I'll leave you now um, and go and get on with my jobs first before I have a look at these trousers. And I'll see you again tomorrow for Friday. So see you tomorrow. Bye. Hello, it's Friday morning here now. I can't believe it's Friday already. It feels like this week has gone very fast. I think it always does where I film this type of video where I pop on every day. But yes, this is the final day of my handmade wardrobe this week. And it's quite a gloomy overcast day outside today, which is a shame. I'm missing the sun. And I've got a bit of a busy day planned today. I'm planning on walking into town this morning, rain permitting. <laughs> if it rains, I may drive, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, hopefully I'll be able to walk into town to meet a couple of friends for coffee, which is nice. There are a couple of friends I've known since our eldest children were teeny tiny babies um, and it's really lovely keeping in touch with them. We used to meet up with the children there 
and it was never much of a chance to actually have much conversation and these days it's just us with the children all at school so I do miss the children being there but it is nice to have proper chat so that's the plan this morning and then this afternoon um, because it's the coronation then um, the school are having a little celebration this afternoon um, as part of the coronation celebration so that's quite nice and they've invited all the parents to come a little bit early up to school and I think there's going to be some refreshments and they may sing some coronation themed songs and that sort of thing so that should be nice but it was supposed to be outdoors so we'll see what happens with the weather it may end up being indoors but fingers crossed but anyway um i decided to wear another dress today it's been quite a week of dresses i think i've worn yeah, skirts and dresses all week this week which has been nice but i've got a dress on that i thought would work quite well for this weather that could get warmer and could be chilly because it's made of double gauze and i find double gauze is a great fabric for keeping you a bit um cozy if you're feeling a bit chilly but also it's quite nice and breathable if it does get a bit hot so that was my plan today and also to be wearing tights again in case of the rain particularly if I walk into town this morning that'll be much better than a pair of jeans so yeah, the dress I'm wearing today is this pattern here and it is the Maya Sotis dress pattern by Deer and Doe which I think is a really lovely shirt dress pattern um so you can make two different versions but both versions have this sort of a v-neck um, detail above the buttons here um, and this kind of pretty band collar and then it's got darts um, to the bust and to the waist which gives quite a nice shape to the bodice and then you can either make a version with a sort of two-tier skirt and these ruffles um, on the sleeves or you can make more of a simple shirt dress just with the short sleeves and a one-tier skirt and the version I'm wearing is a bit of a combination of both um, versions I've got this bodice and this skirt in my version in terms of sizing, I've got the PAVE pattern, which goes from European 34 up to 46, but there is a slightly wider size range available on PDF if you go on the Deer and Day website, and that takes it up to European size 52 and a bust of 45 and 5 eighths of an inch. But I do find with this pattern, it's quite an oversized shirt dress. It's designed to be yeah, really quite loose, so there's a lot of ease, actually. So I've always sized down when I've made this pattern. I think I've made three versions, possibly. And I've always gone for the smallest size, um, which is quite a lot smaller than my measurements on the waist and hips. When you look at the finished garment measurements, which are also on the back of the pattern envelope, there's a huge amount of ease in the hips because it's a gathered skirt. And there's actually loads of ease at the bust and waist too. And I didn't want mine to be really, really oversized. So I've sized down to give it a bit more of a, a fitted look, which I quite like. And I also added on waist ties to pull it in again and cinch it a bit more at the waist. I've gone for these sort of skinny waist ties added in the tight the back and I quite like the shape that gives. I'll stand up a bit so you can see. And then yeah, the fabric I use, this lovely double gauze fabric, which I got a while ago from Lamazi Fabrics. So I don't think it's still in stock there anymore, but it's this navy double gauze with these pretty little sort of dandelions, I guess they are, in white on it. Um, and I really like the navy and blue colour. And I guess it's quite coronation themed as well. I just need a bit of red to my outfit. But yeah, blue and white for the coronation celebrations this afternoon. And I went for little white bot buttons. So you could see this sort of bodice and this sort of button down detail. And I'll put my hair back so you can see the pretty collar. I think the collar is really nice. I have seen um, a hack that, um, I can't remember who it was. Um, somebody on Instagram did a hack to remove the collar and just add sort of like a plain flat neck band, which looked quite nice too. But I do quite like the little collar. I think it's quite a nice detail. See, so yeah, that's my Maya Sotis dress and I really love it actually. And it's actually really comfy to wear. I like how the bodice has been designed. There's plenty of room around the armholes and it's not tight across the shoulders or anything, even though I've sized down. It's just nice and yeah, really comfy around there. But I like how you can kind of cinch it in at the waist as well to give that little bit of shape. So yeah, I think it's a really pretty dress. Um, and I've, I'll put a picture up so you can see what it looks like on. I've got it on with a pair of tights. I may put a cardigan over the top when I head out. I might have a red cardigan upstairs somewhere actually if I do want to go all out red, white and blue for the coronation celebrations later because all the children have actually gone into school wearing red, white and blue. They're allowed to have a non-uniform day and sort of yeah, dress in those colours to celebrate, which is quite sweet. Um, so yeah, maybe I'll put a red cardigan over the top, maybe a raincoat this morning, depending on yeah whether it rains or not when I walk into town. I'll probably yeah need one of those just in case, but that is what I'm wearing today. So that is the final day of this week of my handmade wardrobe. So I hope you've enjoyed hearing about what I've been wearing every day. And um, do let me know if you've enjoyed this video and if you'd like me to do some more of them through the month of May. I do enjoy making them, but it's nice to know if you guys enjoy watching them too. So yeah, let me know. And also if you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. 
and if you're new to my channel then thank you very much for stopping by please do subscribe and press the bell icon too so you'll be notified of when my future videos come out possibly some more of this type of video so yeah thank you very much for watching i hope you've had a good week too and um yeah i'll see you again for another video soon thanks again bye